The silent type printer fills a real need for those who want hard copy. It'll produce both upper and lowercase text and high resolution graphic images. And it does it quietly. Best of all, the silent type doesn't cost very much. It's basically a simple machine. That means that the adjustments and repairs are for the most part easy. In this module, we'll show you how to take it apart and how to replace those things that are replaceable and align those things that can be aligned. Now, this videotape, like the others, is in segments, so after you watch each segment, stop the tape, eject it without rewinding, and take it back to your workstation while you practice the skills modeled for you. Now, the first thing we're going to do is take the silent type apart. We've already turned off the power to the Apple, we've removed the lid, and now we need to disconnect the printer interface card. Okay, now we want to put the silent type printer up on its back and we'll use our foam pad to keep from marring the case of the printer. We need to remove the five screws that hold the cover to the base. Those five screws are located here, 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 and here. Those are the screws for just the uh, cover. We'll go ahead and take these out. Incidentally, you need a special screwdriver. It's called a Torex screwdriver, just like this one to remove these screws. And now the last of the four screws that hold the uh, base onto the printer assembly itself. Okay. We'll set the unit down now. And our next step is to disconnect the interface cable. That's this connector right here closest to the back. You want to be very careful that you pry it off easily without damaging the wires on the cable, like this. Okay, now the unit is free enough so that we can perform any operation on it. If I tip the chassis up, you can see the flexible cable that transmits the impulses from the deserializer card here to the print head assembly, which is right here. Okay, to remove the cable, we need to tip the chassis back down and rotate the print head pulley until the print head is roughly in the middle of this bar right here. Take a small screwdriver and pry the cable clip away from the head carrier forward and down. Now when you do this procedure you'll notice that the cable will fall away from the print head assembly. Tip the chassis up again so that the underside faces you. Unplug the cable from the deserializer card very carefully like this, and then take off the cable clip from the other end of the cable because you may need this clip for the new cable when you replace it. When you put the new cable in, it's important to get it right or you might blow some chips. Now the cable should go like this with the change of direction in the cable pointing upward, just like that. Plug it into the deserializer card and do it very carefully so you don't damage the pins or the cable. Right. Next, we want to put the head clip on, making sure that this little rubber pad is in there. There's a slot on this side right here for the edge fingers of the cable. The cable goes in like that, right on top of the pad. Now we want to bend the cable without twisting, just like this and begin to attach the clip to the printhead assembly. Now this is fairly important. When you're attaching the clip to the printhead assembly, always put the clip on the bottom first. Then make sure the cable is inserted into the clip as far as it will go. Okay, when everything looks good, snap the top over firmly. Now adjust the cable so that it crosses the left side of the chassis at a right angle. And if you like, you may secure with a piece of tape right here. Looks good. Well, that's all there is to changing the head cable. At this point, stop the videotape, eject it without rewinding, and take it back with you to your workstation. And take your silent type apart, remove the head cable, and put it back. When you can do that easily, come on back to the videotape and watch the next segment.